Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everyone. My name is Nate. I also go by Hockey Boy and Nate. And today we're going to be talking about Winter Storm Gale. This thing has really started to ramp up over the past few days when it comes to the models. So something that we all need to continue to monitor. And as this video is being uploaded the day of to make sure that you all understand what all you can expect. First things first, typical self-promotion thing, like, subscribe if you're new, share it with others, yada yada. Appreciate it. I really do. You guys actually, you know, you guys are actually the best, the best in the world uh, when it comes to viewer base. I really do appreciate what all you do. Anyways, let's go on into <laughs> what you guys really want to know, and that is what could be possibly brewing with Winter Storm Gale. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, the timing here because this is a bit of an issue uh, as this continues to move up into the Mid-Atlantic and even the Northeast into New England. So according to the NAM 3K, which the NAM 3K has its own issues as a model, but when it comes to timing, it's relatively good. Uh, you can see how pr wintry precipitation like uh, freezing rain and sleet start to appear in the southern Shenandoah Valley uh, at around at around nine o'clock give or take in the morning uh, and then as it continues to move on through from nine o'clock all the way through it to about uh, give or take three o'clock maybe two o'clock you can definitely see across the board all these pinks and these oranges and what that tells you is freezing rain and sleet and especially since you've got already a lot of that um, in the forecast which you all will see from the national weather service People around in these areas definitely need to continue to be careful and do not drive out in these conditions. Make sure that you have extra food, extra blankets if you do, just in case if you get in an accident or you get stuck uh, in traffic due to an accident or if you just get stuck in general, you definitely want to be prepared in these, uh, in these instances. So get a blanket, get food, get water, make sure you are prepared if you are going to leave. Uh, continuing later in the evening um because this is the afternoon we'll move into the evening i'll remove this circle real quickly for you uh you can kind of see how the freezing rain starts to seep into the dc baltimore regions even up into wilmington and philadelphia this continues to seep in through uh the main reason as to why this all will mainly appear is because there is a lot of warm air aloft uh, at about the 800 to 700 millibar region. So as the warm air continues to push in, uh, that'll be able to turn the precipitation up high in the atmosphere to rain, in which as it continues to fall down, the air below the warm air is cold or relatively cool, which will be able to freeze it into freezing rain or sleet, and that's how you get the wintry precipitation of those sorts. So something to keep in mind, especially since this is the late hour commute, uh, around Baltimore, D.C., Philadelphia, definitely one of those things to where you have to keep that in mind uh, as that can impact your commute and travel back home. Continuing off into the evening and late night hours, you can definitely see these dark purple start to appear in South Central PA into Central PA as this continues to move up. The low pressure hugs the coast relatively closely, so southern New Jersey, Delaware, into the Delmarva areas. Uh, you guys could relative, uh, see relatively gusty winds, but just a lot of rain in this instance due to the fact that the warm air is relatively close to you and it won't get cold enough for there to be any sort of wintry precipitation. But as it continues to move on through into the midnight hours, you can start to see how that wintry precipitation starts to affect places like Long Island, Trenton, New York City itself, maybe Southern Connecticut. Definitely one of those things where as this continues to move on through, you need to monitor this. Uh, some of this can in turn turn into snow. Uh, as a matter of fact, I feel like the NAM 3K does over-exaggerate how much precip uh, wintry precipitation when it comes to ice and sleet there actually is. So something to keep in mind around these areas is that you guys could see some enhanced amount of snowfall, ice, sleet, uh, but you could also see some rain too in the beginning. And then as this continues to move off into the early morning hours for Thursday, this is where it starts to curl off uh, towards the Cape Cod area. It stays relatively off the coast of Nantucket 
and as it steers off to the west of Cape Cod, there's some residual snow into the New England areas will continue to reside all the way up into the mid-afternoon hours and maybe into the evening. All right, let's take a look at the GFS, and it'll be able to show you the snow totals for this. I kind of sided my prediction off with the GFS, uh, mainly because I felt like most of the models were oversaturating the air or making it a lot more moist than it should be, so it over-exaggerated its snow totals. Uh, however, I do relatively agree uh, with, for the most part, uh, across the board with what the GFS says. Uh, central Pennsylvania, you can see almost up to a foot, of, a foot to two feet of snow. Um, as a matter of fact, much of Pennsylvania, you can see a foot and a half to two feet. Uh, moving closer into the northeast and the... Um, alluded my head to the Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and Connecticut areas. Uh, you guys can see up to a foot, give or take, of snow. Uh, and then, especially around the Del Marva areas, you guys are in the question mark at the moment, especially since that warm air could impact the amount of wintry precipitation, ice, sleet, and snow that you might all get. Let's go over to the National Weather Service's predictions here for snowfall amounts and you guys definitely need to continue to monitor the national weather service i i would trust the national weather service more than myself i would trust it more than any other youtuber on youtube uh including current meteorologists they were given this job to inform the public and they were they are the ones who are trained professionals and know more about the situation than anyone on YouTube uh, does, unless if they are actually a part of the National Weather Service. So something to keep that in mind. But you can definitely see across the board that there are uh, definitely a lot of high amounts of snow totals, 20 inches. Uh, you can definitely see two feet in here if you look hard enough, probably not as a number, but you can see Harrisburg gets 19 inches, Chambersburg gets 18. If you move further, Scranton gets 16. Allentown gets 20, 17, um, well, 15 actually. But uh, further north than that, up in the uh, higher elevations, you can get 20. And especially in some of these higher elevations areas, you guys can get even more than two feet, uh, as, especially as you get closer towards the coast or closer towards the uh, determining edge of the uh, rain and snow. So something to keep that in mind. But central Pennsylvania, you guys could definitely see uh, heavier amounts of snowfall. Even if we go up into New England, you guys can also see... That was the word I was looking for, New England, earlier. <laughs> uh, but you can definitely see how it almost gets up to a foot in uh, places like Boston. That actually gets there uh, north of Plymouth, so something to keep in mind there. As well as Connecticut, you guys get to around a foot or maybe even above a foot of snow expected. Go off to the freezing rain too, because the freezing rain, as I mentioned before, very dangerous. For whatever reason, the uh, map is currently not loading. There it is, it finally just loaded. Uh, but you can definitely see all along this corridor right here, you can see this wide amount of freezing rain that can get up to almost a half inch of accumulated ice according to the National Weather Service. Personally, I think it could be a little bit more um, if enough moisture gets into those areas, but I highly doubt it. So I would say a half, uh, half inch to three quarters of an inch of ice could be possible in your vicinity. But Harrisonburg, Stanton, uh, Charlottesville, moving further down to Roanoke, you guys could see some heftier amounts of, of ice. So definitely one of those things where you're going to want to keep in mind. Uh, especially as it can get into a tenth of an inch uh, further south and be more widespread compared to the Shenandoah Valley. Let's go out into my prediction for snowfall. Uh, and as you can see, uh, it's pretty much a little bit of an expansion of what I had in my stream earlier on today, uh, even into uh, yesterday. I did move my 18 to 24 inches of snow further north, but I also did expand it. I kept the same um, around the Allegheny Mountains, mainly because I know that area from experience and that that, uh, that area will continue to get a lot of snow. So if you guys are traveling along Interstate 68, which I hope none of you do, um, you guys will definitely need to chain your tires in order to be able to escape that vicinity. Other than that, the 18 to 24 inch zone has been expanded up to Scranton and into southern parts 
of New York and northern parts, the very northern parts of New Jersey. Uh, 18 to 12 inches has been included to New England. Uh, I left out Cape Cod mainly because there's going to be a lot of warm air and uh, warm waters around it still. So it'll basically nullify the opportunity of it actually having any measurable snowfall. And then I also added, um, I also expanded the uh, three to five inches further north. Uh, before I had Albany in the three to five inches, uh, then I started to think and realize that the high pressure may not be as uh, well-rounded as it is, but it still uh, will be enough to impact places like Syracuse and upstate New York. So that's the reason why I kind of have this gap right here of the three, the five to eight inches and put Albany in the eight to 12. Most of the models definitely were in a consensus of central Pennsylvania definitely being the worst area to get impacted. But if you do live along the I-95 corridor, you guys could see some freezing rain, some sleet, and maybe some heavier amounts of snowfall as you move further north. So something to keep in mind with all of that. As we end up the video off here, I hope you guys did enjoy this nice little informational. I did make a short video on purpose, mainly so that the people who may have to get out the door or may want to listen could hear it relatively quickly and just to make sure that you guys can actually be able to figure out what all could be coming. Uh, could be coming. A reminder, real quickly, that even if you aren't in some of these areas like Albany or Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh 5 to 8 inches, or even if you aren't in places like Scranton or Harrisburg, stuff like that, maybe even Hartford, Connecticut, even if you aren't in these areas, you definitely still need to be safe out there. So once again, uh, my name is Nate. I also go by Hockey Boy and 8. I'll catch you later in the next video and or stream. So peace out, everyone. See ya.